I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Well, welcome back to the ATR Bar Talk segment, where we're going to gauge NHL topics or our confidence on NHL topics by our choice of drink. Are you not really that confident? Oh, God, I just need a shot. Yeah, you're so, so. You're like, I'll take a beer. Or are you so confident you're buying the entire bar right now? So um, we're going to start with something that came up yesterday, and uh, it was nice. It was a nice little laugh. The Rangers podcast billboard will affect the uh, Jack Eichel situation. I had to read it again because I realized it was effect or effect, but um, that's always a good one. John, start with you. Shot. <laughs> They're not going to do anything. And Based I, on that build was, and no, it, they're not. And it, it was, it was basically a, a, a troll job and kind of like a, a little, uh, a little attention grab, if you will. Um, but you know, it's funny. It's clever. I'll give them that. It, it, it's been done before in the past. Um, supposedly, it was done with the Jets years ago during uh, Jeff Idzik's uh, ten- tenure as general manager. Yeah, they flew um, a plane over the practice field that said "Fire Idzik." Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, it, it's it's been it's been done before. It's 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 clever, but I mean, it was funny. I got a laugh out of it. Um, but you know what? In the end, it's not going to prompt Kevin Adams to do anything. So, I mean, good on them. But uh, saying shot here, it's just not going to do anything to them. Anthony, over to you. Yeah, this is a silly shot. Um, it's funny, uh, but it's not going to force any type of domino effect with Buffalo and Jack Eichel. Um, oh, I will say the Islander fans did a billboard for a snow must go before uh, – Ledecky and, and Malkin finally, um, you know, brought in. Oh, like, yeah. Stuff, but they brought That's in right. I forgot Go about Bill that. Board, which, which is pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, no. So sometimes these things happen. They're funny. It's You get a kick to see. But um, it's not going to, you know, make a professional organization do anything based on fans getting a billboard. Uh, let's make it a queen. Uh, uh, queen. Let's make it a clean sweep. Three shots, because uh, this is not only just something that's been happening for billboards this week or with the Jets or with Snow Must Go. I mean, this has been going on since it's on like sports and billboards. And I mean, it's just no, this is a fruitless gesture. And you think uh, you think the pressure of Jack Eichel's surgery would be enough to make Kevin Adams move on it or maybe even his agent making demands, but no, we're going to put up a billboard. Good thing. You guys got that. It's funny. It's, it's just kind of funny. Free Eichel hashtag free Eichel, but, um, it's just, no, um, it's, that's just wasting some money. Do you guys play fantasy hockey? Yeah. Uh, Happened in years. Anthony, what's your team name? Uh, I don't even know at this moment. I'd have to go look. I forget what, uh, what it was. Well, mine was huge caco. So, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Igor Sturkin is a top five fantasy goalie in uh, in the league right now. So, Anthony, is he a top five fantasy goalie? No, it usually goes by wins, um, shutouts. Um, so, I don't know if he's top five in that regard. Um, but, you know, Pete Jensen from NHL.com did fantasy rankings, and he had he had uh, the duo of Verlamov and Sorokin at one. I forget what his his individual rankings were. I think I think he had Shesterkin in the top ten, I believe, but I don't think he had him in the top five. But that ranking was only about a week old, so you could pull it up. Um, but no, again, if you're gonna draft a goal in fantasy hockey again, you're gonna want to get someone who wins like Vasilevsky, like a top team, and you want to get a guy that posts a lot of shutouts. Um, and there's not a knock on Shesterkin. He's a great goalie, but I, I wouldn't say he's top five fantasy wise at this moment. Phil, I'll jump in for the second part of this. Um, oh wait, so wait, is that beer or shot or some Anthony? Um, shot. Okay, so we got the shot right here. Phil, I'll jump in. I'll say it's a beer. Um, uh, again, I love Igor, and I love what the goalie he's going to be. 
uh, going forward. His save percentage and his goals against were outstanding in his first year. Struggled a little bit early on. Um, but as far as he goes, and also, by the way, the other factor that goes into this is how much they're going to play Alexander Georgiev. Uh, for fantasy hockey, I would I would actually rank Simeon Valamov ahead of him. Uh, I understand a, a monkey wrench that goes into some of the rankings is, hell, you have two of the guys nominated for the Vesna Trophy on, like, terrible teams that from last uh, – that were, were Vesna finalists last year. Hell, yeah. the Vesna winner just went to Chicago, and – that's going to get ugly. I just shuddered at the, at the thought of that for Mark andre Fleury. Um, but no, so Sturkin's going to be good. It's just, is he going to get off to a good start? Uh, and, of course, as I keep going back to, the Gerard Glant factor. This team is going to be better in their own end. Guarantee that. Take it to the bank. So a beer for me. John? I'm going beer. Um, right now, I wouldn't consider it, but... There, there is a possibility this year that this team improves and he ends up being one by the end of the year. But um, if we're talking as of this moment right now, I'd probably say no. Um, I, I just – there's not enough of a body of work. There's definitely the potential. Um, but like you mentioned, Grubauer, Seattle. Flurry, the Vezina winner, Chicago. And what's going on in Chicago with that defense outside of Seth Jones? Adam Bokwitz is gone. He went in the re- he went in the return to Columbus, so they don't have a lot of great options on defense in Chicago. Um, there's not a lot of depth at all, and uh, some of the other guys. I mean, Carolina. I mean, they don't they don't have anything great in Anderson, and their defense downgraded big time by losing Hamilton and then replacing him with Bear and D'Angelo, two guys that really aren't great defensively at all. Not that Hamilton was like a a Norris winner because of his defense. But there's a lot of teams. It's not a lot of gold in you know, a, a lot of great situations. So, got to love Giuseppe interruptions. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out, I missed my balls. Please, Daddy, help me. Yeah, the <laughs> poor, poor puppy. But um, he uh, – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say beer here, but there, there, there's a potential that he ends up being one, but it just right as the second, no. Yeah, I mean, he could very easily get in there. Uh, things can change greatly, and uh, I got full faith in it. I mean, he had an unbelievable save percentage in uh, his second month in the NHL. And I think his February save percentage is over 925 anyway uh, for his career so far. For, yes, yeah, so, I mean that's that's incredible. Uh, well, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna answer. A, oh no, we're not. We're gonna move on because now we got Anthony back. Um, because Anthony, this one is tailor made for you. Lou Lamarillo will announce a free agent signing by Labor Day. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually inclined to say shot here because. Um, he technically has until training camp to to reveal his cards here. So, um, you know, the belief was that the, whatever he was working on, um, you know, he didn't announce yet because he needs to complete that before he can announce his signing. So, some had said it was signing his RFAs. Um, does he does it contingent on Bovillier and Sorokin reaching deals? Uh, first, or is it contingent on making that trade first before he announces the signings? But either way, again, you know, training camp doesn't start till like you know middle to later of September, so um, he doesn't really have to do anything right now. And you know, I could I could see this dragging into September before he announces anything. I made the reference to Arthur Staple. He kind of chuckled that you know you'll probably get the the tweet from some Islander beat writer that Zach Brise is skating at Northwell with you know a bunch of Islanders. They're arriving for informal skates before it's even announced that he signed with the team. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm getting growing sense that, that we don't see these announcements of his re-signings and signings for a while. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go shot, actually. I'm going to say all quiet with the Islanders. Phil. I mean, before this, I probably would have gone between beer and... And um, round, but hearing about that and the way that it, it's dragged out, I, I mean, 
Also, by the way, with the question, are we are we talking about just a free agent signing in general, meaning their own guys, or are we are we saying somebody else like from another team? Uh, I would say, I would I would definitely well because the case is Zeke's counting that because he's a well, U.S. That, that's the thing. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if it's their own re-signings that you're you're, you're talking about with this, or if it's or if it's somebody outside. Uh, none of their RFAs. None of their RFAs. None of none of their own UFAs. Then no, they they the, only the UF the UFAs. Yeah. So even if it's a player that's on it, like a, like Sezikis counts towards this. Sezikis would count towards this. Yes. Um. I don't know if it's by Labor Day, but I would I would I would definitely say by by training camp. I think that they're going to probably have Palmieri under contract. Mm-hmm. I think Sezikas will probably be back too. I, I I don't I don't see these guys going anywhere now. Um unless Buffalo decides to come along and say, Hey, we'll give you ten million dollars to come play for us because we're an embarrassment of an organization. So um yeah, I don't I don't know I if it's about the money for Sezikas, I mean he could go there, but I doubt it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say beer here. I, I think somebody's get uh, somebody's getting signed by not Labor Day but training camp. I got your shot again, uh, and it's it's so funny. And uh, Anthony kind of said it best. I think we're actually going to find the mysteries of Oak Island before we find um, who are the Islanders signed in free agency. Uh, the um, it's just and you're going to have people breaking it, going look. We got Zach Parise skating at Northwell. Oh no, no, no! Lou comes out, waves that off, or you know, horse's head in the bed, as Anthony likes to say. It's just, it's, it's. I, I don't understand the secrecy. Sometimes we're not trying to, um, uh, try to take out the leader of a government or rescue hostages. We're trying to play a hockey game or sign a hockey team. Just announce the damn dr- uh, signings. And Lou well, keep, it, keep in mind, better. um, keep, yeah, keep in mind last last year he didn't announce the the signings of uh, well, re signings of Andy Green and Matt Martin until literally training camp was was already underway because those didn't get announced until he re signed Barzell. Barzell didn't re sign with them until after like the third or fourth day of camp. So technically, Martin and 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 green were there at camp, but no one knew in what fashion, if it was a PTO or a contract and they got announced after Barzell signed. So, um, he very well may do the same thing with Palmieri, Sezika, Zajac and Parise. They'll be there, but their contracts won't be announced until training camp starts. So, uh, I, I just still wonder about the legality of all this or the practice, but Lula Amarillo does say, if you've got time, use it. Um, moving on to another Jack Eichel story. Yay. Um, Anthony <laughs> Son and Kevin Fiala, the wild are officially out on Jack Eichel and I'm going to buy everybody around, but it wasn't really officially, uh, from Kevin Fiala. I think they were never in They You could say that they were in, they were going, they, they have $12 million of cap penalties next season and 14 and a half the next Two seasons. How were they ever in on Jack Eichel? They're barely in on Kapro, uh, Kirill Kaprizov. So um, I'm going to say that they were out no matter what, but now it's official. <laughs> Done. All right, John. Um, I'm going to say shot for this, but they're out on Eichel for other reasons. The reasons why they're out on Eichel is because right now under contract, after this season coming up, after the 21-22 season, so for 2022-23, 23-24, and 24-25, they have 12, uh, just under 13, and then just under 15 million in dead cap for those two, three, and four years. So they have under contract during that time, they have Joel Erickson Eck, Jared Spurgeon, and uh, Jonas Brodin, all under contract. That's it. So if you add, if they get Kaprizov back, let's just say on a three year deal, and they give him about nine million, you're going to have between those four players, 
and the dead cap, you're going to have about 30 to 35 million, I believe, tied up in cap just on three players, four play, four players. No, th- yeah, four players, and then the two dead cap hits. So that's going to make it about 45 million. So you're. Oh, going- hey, guys, we got to stop oh. for a second because signing in right now is one of the fastest men <laughs> we ever had the pleasure of watching. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Bye. You know, um, that's awesome. And, and <laughs> I, I just wanted to also let them know somebody's going to come calling. The, they always need a penalty killer for the playoffs. So uh, uh, I, I still think he's got gas left in the tank. I, I just he does. He's what? He's 30, 33 years old. Thirty three. He still got he. Listen, he yeah. could probably still be a good bottom six forward at the very <laughs> least. Okay? And and again, that's one of those things. Like I said before, you know, teams need guys like that when it comes to playoff time. So yeah. that's just how it's going to happen. Um, it'll be fun. Awesome. This Can't wait to edit this awesome. video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's get let's get back to talking about the Minnesota Wild for a minute. <laughs> the, as Stat Boy Steven says, the side salad of the NHL. Um, yeah. So Anthony, um, the Wild officially out after resigning uh, Fiala. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say shot only like Phil said, not for this reason, but in this talking about specifically about this, it's a shot because, um, this season they have a ton of cap space right now. So Fiala 5 million, they could still afford to shake it to trade for Jack Eichel. It's the viability about it going forward is really where the question is. Um, but as for this year, no signing Kevin Fiala doesn't mean they're out on Jack Eichel, uh, at all. Which, by the way, I'm surprised Fiala only got one year. I thought they were gonna maybe look to lock him up longer term, but um, you know, he, he's a good good player, 20 goal season. Um, and who knows? Maybe realistically, too, you know, Buffalo would have to take back some salary in any Eichel trade. Maybe Fiala is a guy that they would take back the other way if they were to make that happen. But that's neither here or there at the moment. But um, but yeah, no shot to. on this. Uh, the, the signing of Fiala has nothing to do with the Wild and Jack Eichel for this season. All right, and uh, move it on. Sam Reinhart will move the needle in Florida. You know the forgotten Buffalo Saber that was traded this year. Uh, Anthony, let's start with you on this one. Um, you know, beer. I I thought the, the Panthers obviously made a lot of strides this season. You know, they made the playoffs. They gave the Lightning a good run. Uh, they have their core of Barkoff and Huberdeau, who are two fantastic players. Um, you know, the addition of Sam Bennett helped them, but uh, you know, you looked at their team and you say, there's still some things left to be desired. Um, and a guy to kind of, you know, almost fill, fill the hole that Trocek, uh, you know, made when he left. I think Sam Reinhardt could do exactly that. He's a good offensive player. He could play behind Barkov, uh, on the second line. You know, this is a guy that was on a pretty bad Buffalo team and still put up some pretty respectable numbers. Um, so yeah, while, while he's not a, you know, a Kirill Kaprizov type player or Jack Eichel, um, he's, he's a good player. So I, I think at the sum of the parts, when you consider him to all the other weapons they already have, I think he's, I think there's no question makes Florida a better team. So, um, you know, beer, definitely. Phil. Uh, yeah, th- I'm going to say round here. He's absolutely a needle mover. He's a top six forward. And he's a skilled one at that. Uh, that's a guy that basically, like Anthony said, he's going to replace somebody like Vinny Trocha. And they've needed that. And now you're going to have Anton Lundell coming in. Probably, maybe even this year. I, I don't I don't necessarily know if it's going to be this year. But if it's not this year, I'd imagine Lundell would be with them next year. You're going to have him. You're going to have Dennis Senko coming up. I mean, you... They've got pieces in place, and Sam yeah. Reinhardt solidifies that that top six. And if Sam Bennett can play the way that he played down the stretch with them last year, then that's another option in their top six, or even in their middle six. So that gives them more depth. Uh, more depth. Sorry. So um, I'm saying round here. You know what? 
Uh, I was sort of ready to say beer, but no, I'm going right with you. It's around. Um, that top six is starting to look nasty. Um, and again, don't ever forget, they got Joel Quenville. Joel Quenville is, is one of the best coaches of all time. So he's going to figure out a way to use him and, and get this going. So, all right, have at it with Sam, with Sam Bennett. It's it, these guys, Florida is going to be a quite a formidable team. I can tell you that. And it's, they're going to be, I mean, they, they, they could be a juggernaut next year. I'm going to, I'm already going to go on record and say that the, their problem who's showing up in net. You either trust that 20 year old or you're trusting um, Sergey Bobrovsky to to remember he used to be Sergey Bobrovsky. Uh, I don't know if that's happening. Um, I said earlier in the, po- in the, in the podcast that uh, Donald fear might have his hands full. The, the Evander Kane has played his last game in the NHL. I'll start this. I'm going to say beer. The only reason why I'm even saying beer is because contracts, unions, they can, they can, they can still force guys to go back to their teams if they want to. Um, Evander Kane might be let go from the San Jose Sharks. Uh, there are reports players don't want to play with him anymore. They don't even want him in the locker room. Um, there's all the personal drama. And then, oh, yeah, he might have gambled on the game. So, uh, again, I think it's going to be it's, it's going to be tough. But uh, I think I could see him playing more games, possibly even for the San Jose Sharks. I just don't know who's signing him after this if they if they let him go. Uh, Philk. I'm going to say beer just because we, we don't know everything yet. It's, it's still somewhat of a fluid situation. Um, yeah, uh, th- this, this one, Sean, again, <laughs> humor because it just, uh, yeah. So I- I- I'm gonna, I'm gonna say beer for now. Um, I could definitely see it being his last game, but we don't know all the details. Um, I'm going to wait and let let it just play out. I, I hate jumping to conclusions based on something like this. Right. I better let everything just come out. And then at that point, we go from there. So I'm going to say and, beer. And again, to use a word said a lot in, in the show Letter Kenny, allegedly. By the way, it's all alleged. <laughs> There, there, there's um, uh, it's just that when smoke like that starts, conversations start too. Anthony, um, I'm gonna go beer. Uh, I know I've been reading on Twitter the last couple of days, uh, weeks that some of the Sharks players have said that they made it known that if Evander Kane is gonna be a part of the organization next season, that they wouldn't want to be. So that puts the Sharks in a bad spot obviously you can't you know you can't lose a bunch of guys just by keeping one so at the same time though if andrew kane hasn't been proven guilty of anything yet so within a situation where it kind of looks bad on the sharks if they sit there and get rid of a guy where nothing's even proven yet so it's a real sticky situation for san jose right now um you know if they do look to move him um i still think there will be a team out there that will look to that will look to add him possibly i mean when Slava Voinov was looking for, like, you know, to get reinstated, they heard there were NHL teams that said they would consider signing him if he was able to play again. So, and look, what, what he did was much, much worse. And we're not to go there, but let's face it, it is. Um, so, Vander Kane, yeah, I think a team might give him another shot, especially if he's proven, if, if it was proven these allegations were false, definitely. Um, but right now, yeah, his, his future is a little muddy. It's not clear by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't think we can go there yet and say he's played his last game. So I'm going to go beer. Although if you want to say he's played his last game with San Jose, that I may be a little more inclined to do a round with. But for this, I'll do beer. And again, in situations like this, you always want to just say, hey, you, you hope the, the truth is something worse than this. And uh, and uh, hopefully everything gets sorted out. But and- uh Sorry, and what? I just—I was gonna say—I just well, John was was talking. I just read on Twitter that the 
NHL Board of Governors approved uh, ads on Jersey starting in the 22-23 season. Hmm. Which Thank I'm you. not really happy Thank about. Thank you. I have my editorial like, now. <laughs> I don't want this to be like soccer or anything. I, I'm really not happy about having, you know, ads on jerseys. If it's a small little logo, you know, like the bottom of the jersey on the back or the upper chest in the front, I mean, maybe, but I don't want to see these stupid ads on jerseys. I think that'll ruin it. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, I, and I get it. They lost a lot of revenue this year, but still it's, uh, me personally, there's desecrating a Ranger Jersey with a, with a, with an ad on there. Granted they've had ads on there already. What do you think the Nike or Reebok symbol has been for years? But still, it's just, no, uh, I, I hate ads on jerseys. I, I always do. Uh, World Juniors, different story, but we're not NASCAR. So, all right. So, what are your thoughts? I know that um, we got interrupted by uh, Michael Grabner joining us. That'll be on a Tuesday. very pleasant interruption. It was yes. Yeah. We'll, we will take any interruption from any guest all time. But um, and make a note that was our first. That was our first active active player that we've ever we've ever had on dating back to off the post too so that was that was really cool that was really cool of grabs to join us yeah i mean and it's awesome and again we hope uh grabs gets another uh phone call from a team that's looking to make the playoffs and we're going to make a run this year uh but what are your thoughts Igor sisterkin top five uh fantasy goalie is will the billboard have any effect or put any pressure on buffalo nope but um <laughs> <laughs> Will Lou Lamorell ever announce a free agent <laughs> signing? I mean, I think we won't know their sign until they're on the ice. And Sam Reinhart, well, he moved the needle in Florida. Put it all down in the comments below. By the way, again, everybody, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.